Hi, this is E.B. Solomon from The Real Deal, and I'm sitting here remotely with Bess Friedman, CEO of Brown Harris Stevens. Bess, thank you so much for chatting today. Good morning, E.B. So nice to see your face. Likewise. So Brown Harris Stevens offices have been closed since around mid-March, um, but we're talking today about what that process has been like and also about some of the conversations that you're having now about what it would look like to reopen, which seems like something almost inconceivable as of a few weeks ago. So walk me through um, just how things have been with the closure. Well, initially, when we decided to shut the offices, you know, we sent a memo to all the agents letting them know that we were doing this. Obviously, they could come in to get certain things because we weren't on pause yet in New York uh, State. So we didn't know, but we knew it was the time to do it. So we did that. And then the pause came into effect. Um, so we've been sending guidance, et cetera. But some agents have had to get into the office to get things, to retrieve documents, to, you know, they left things there. So they, they are able to access the offices, but we're encouraging them to follow the CDC, wear masks, you know, use some common sense and be careful. You know, we're looking for harm minimization. We don't want people to put themselves at risk. Um, so we're trying to help them do those things. And we have some people who are going in to get mail and checking on things. Uh, but as this unraveled and we started to think about what reopening could look like, mm -hmm. you know, we had to think about the safety and what that would mean in an office environment. Uh, so we had a contractor come in recently to look at the spaces and decide, are we putting up plexiglass? Oh, wow. we, you know, what are we doing? And we're going to put up plexiglass in front of our receptionists in our offices. And many of our offices are really, the agents are spaced out. So I think we're okay when it comes to that. We'll stagger times that people come in. We ordered hand sanitizer. We're expecting that uh, soon in the next few weeks mm -hmm. so that we can put those in exclusive listings. So when people come in, they'll have that. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting masks homemade. Our chief marketing officer, Pablo Marvel, his mom is a designer, but she offered to make them for, for us, beautiful cloth ones, the labor she's donating. We just have to pay for the materials and then she's gonna donate all the funds to charity. So it's kind of a win-win. Um, but remember, I don't, every person has to decide what makes sense. And if an agent is sick, mm -hmm. you know, they should definitely stay home. We're encouraging them to just be careful. I don't know if you saw that article in the Times about what's going on in Hong Kong. Did you see that? I did. That yeah. they have these thermal scanners. So the, the reporters the New York would do here. I mean, before they go in, a, a thermal scanner will take their temperature before they can go in, and they're wearing masks. And but they've had only four deaths in Hong Kong out of seven and a half million people, and a thousand positive cases. Um, and their people are back in restaurants; they're spacing them apart. They're cleaning the subways, you know, with hand sanitizer nonstop. I mean, they're doing all these things so they can, and and they've done very well. The question is, can we do that in the United States? Right. So, I mean, it reopening your offices officially is still a ways away. So when did you start thinking about this? You know, we started thinking about it pretty soon after we shut down. We started to think about what this would look like because questions kept coming in. When, when, when do you think we can go back to work? Yeah. Agents are asking, when can we, you know, they want, people want to get back to work, which I totally understand. There's an economic, you know, issue underlying all of this and people want to get to work. Mm -hmm. Sellers need to sell, buyers want to find properties. So we have been looking at this for a while and trying to figure out what makes the most sense. Um, and so I assume that we will probably get back to things in June. It looks like that will be, we're stage two. Um, and it looks like June will be the time when agents can actually begin to show again. Got it. So, but in terms of your office, those changes in theory would be made before that June date, whatever the June date is. Like you're making some changes for your offices first. Of course. And we've already, like we've done things like we're putting together schedules. We're working on that now so that if there are agents who sit next to each other, they should, we want to make sure that they're coming in at different times. Yeah. We're going to stagger coming in times. We're never going to have a packed office. Um, we're looking at conference rooms, how many people per room, you know, masks, part, you know, the plexiglass in front of receptionists, 
all of those things we're getting ready now so that when we do open, we provide the safest environment for professionals because, you know, it's up to them. Each individual has to make a decision as to whether they want to go out and, co and go to work. And we have to provide an environment that keeps them safe. And we, we're going to do that. Based on how frequently agents use the office, can you see any longer term decisions that Brown Harris has to make? Can you see a scenario where more agents want to be mobile or fewer come in on a regular basis? And I mean, I know agents are, are remote anyway, but can you see a scenario where you don't need to have as much of a physical footprint as you do now? You know, it's a possibility. Uh, we have no plans to change anything right now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as you know, we're in the information and service business right. and agents feed off of each other. And so coming into the office and coming to meetings and doing those things helps them. So I, maybe there'll be a percentage of agents that opt to work from home. And I might, I would understand that they may also have underlying health issues that I would encourage them to stay home. But a lot of people will decide that they need to come into the office and meet with people, talk to their colleagues, talk to their um, managers and that sort of thing. But in a year, from now the whole landscape may change you know people may be working more remotely after this that's a possibility it's it's just I'm in the I don't know school at this point because none of us do right mm -hmm. right no it's it's so unknown how have the remote showings and walk through how is how has that been going for the agents are you in the camp of closings can someone can see an apartment or see a home virtually and actually buy it or I think you know things that were already in process you know we were getting closed we've been able to do those for the most part uh, you know but is somebody gonna look online and and or see do a FaceTime with an agent and look at the apartment and say yes I'm gonna buy it I would say very unlikely um, renting is more possible because it's temporary housing people are more inclined to, to spend money in that way if they need to find a place but when people are buying they can look at it online but for the most part unless it's an investor I strongly believe they're going to insist on seeing the space and so I think people are not going to be pulling the trigger unless they get to walk the lobby get in the elevator like look around understand what the chemistry is people need to feel that out you know and so I think that's kind of on hold although agents are trying everything I know like Kathy Sloan is like coming up with all these great ideas. I mean, people want to try to encourage buyers to, you know, look at properties and they're looking online, uh, whether they're actually putting offers in, you know, I think is, is not happening as much. So paint me a picture. What is an open house going to look like in a few months? Or maybe there won't be an open house, but maybe will there be like, what will a showing look like? Is it a scenario where like everyone's in masks, everyone's in gloves and booties or like, yeah, I think that most likely open houses, what they may do is like an open house by appointment and do them like 15 minutes apart. So you don't have so many people in a space. You right. probably, can probably start to do that at some point. And then showings are going to be where everybody's, you know, socially, you know, distancing themselves from each other and wearing masks and I believe gloves and providing hand sanitizer, you know, that is going to have to happen at least I think through the summer until we get to a place where we know that there is some sort of vaccine or we understand where we are in this process. So I think that's going to be the case through the summer, I would guess. Right. Um, and I guess one question for you is, you know, just from the perspective of running this business, um, what do you anticipate for June in terms of um, just being able to bring back staff. Um, Brown Harris was one of the firm, I mean, many firms in New York had to furlough workers. How do you see that playing out come June? What are your, your hopes anyway? You know, I think in June, you know, we had a furlough, some people, and yeah. I think we most likely that will stay in place probably. Uh, we're managing everything with people like our marketing team and, you know, all of our support, our admins are doing things, you know, via phone or on the computer. And I think that will stay in place in June. Yeah. Um, perhaps it will loosen up in July and we start having more people come into the office. But a lot of our support, remember, travel in to New York City or different places to get to work. And so it may be a challenge for them. And some of them have small children. So we wanna make sure that the ones that are working are in the best case scenario for themselves. I do not, I want harm minimization. I do not want people, you know, um, putting themselves at risk. 
Right. Did Brown Harris or did, did your parent company, Terra Holdings, apply for a PPP loan to get through this? I, I don't think that they did that. They discussed it and then they decided not to, is my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, what else has come up from the agents um, in terms of their ability to navigate this remotely? Is there any, are there any other changes to the way that you do business to your general day-to-day -day process that you think will be different? You know, I think what the good, the plus side of this is that a lot of our agents who are not as savvy with technology mm -hmm. and social media have been, you know, taking all of our webinars. We're doing these things constantly through the week, these webinars. We had Greg Heim yesterday uh, do one, who's our chief economist, and um, we have social media training. I think they're all getting completely fluent with these new platforms that they just weren't involved with before because they have no alternative. Mm -hmm. So Brown Harris Stevens, which is known as being like an old school firm, a legacy firm, and agents who are kind of old school have become very, you know, adept at doing all these things. And in the meantime, we have this platform we've been working on. It's called Maya. But the Salesforce has created for us. Mm -hmm. That's going to streamline all our processes. And we um, began working on that a year ago. It's now done and we're in the testing phases. So it couldn't come at a better time. It's going to be a place where all our regions communicate, where everything is streamlined and it's communication, it's listings, it's marketing in one place. So that has like been, po you know, for us, it's been poetic, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Perfect timing for us. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for chatting. I really appreciate it. Um, You're welcome. Thank you, Eb. It's good to see you. Enjoy your children. Thank Read you. all those books behind you. <laughs> A lot of books behind you. I'll get started. Thanks, Beth. Thank you so much, Eb. Stay safe. You too. Bye-bye.